H A T E O A S. In this, in this presentation, we are going to learn what is and why you want to use H A T E O A S. And we are going to learn the concept of logical link relationship definitions from W3C. We are going to see what kind of support we have in JAX, uh, what kind of H A T O A S support in JAXRS. And basically, we're going to actually see how we can embed the links in the response body as well as how we can embed links in the link response header. So what is and why H-A-T-E-O-A-S? So if you think about the, uh, if you remember the architectural principles of REST applications, we have several of those, addressability, uniform interface, representation oriented, and stateless, and H-A-T-E-O-A-S. By the way, it stands for hypermedia as the engine of application state. So this is what we are going to talk about in this presentation. Now, let's think about the problems that might happen in a typical REST applications. Uh, resources will evolve and change over time. What I mean by that is that it could change the URL patterns. You know, the addresses might be actually changing. Flow of operations could be changing, you know, from one URL to the another URL uh, could be changing. States might be changing, for example, in a document, uh, the uh, format, uh, document type could be changing. So any client-side assumptions about the server resources will break eventually. Okay? So if client has a lot of assumptions about URL patterns, URL ad addresses, flow of operations, state of changes, basically that make client and server tightly coupled. It means change in the server will break the clients. So what we want to do is we want to minimize the coupling between client and server and that's basically what HATE is all about. It enables loose coupling between client and server, which means it will allow client and server to evolve independently. So we are going to talk about more concrete benefits of HATEOAS. The first, uh, location transparency. Second, decouples interaction details, basically flow control. So let's talk about the uh, location transparency. Uh, by location transparency, we are talking about two things. Uh, we want to minimize the URIs exposed to the client by the RESTful applications. So ideally, the client might actually grab the initial URI and from that point on, the URI should be actually given to the client uh, through embedded links. So that's one way of providing transparency, location transparency. So client does not really need to know the, uh, the location information about the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, resources except initial URIs. The second location transparency is, you know, the, uh, is to provide logical, use the logical link names. Uh, rather than actual URI addresses. So provide logical link names uh, in the client rather than actual URIs of the uh, link resources. What could be done is that uh, when the server, when the service or resources return the response data, it could actually return some uh, logical definitions in the form of, in this case, REL relation equal next. Next is a logical link name, but the actual uh, concrete URI is httpjpassion.com slash customer slash start to equal to, size equal to, and things like that. So by using this next logical relation, a client should be able to access the actual address. Right, so this actual address could be changing in the future while this next uh, relation stay the same. Okay. So uh, by having the client to use the logical link names, client has a less uh, the uh, dependency or less tightly coup less coupling uh, with the actual URIs. And second advantage is decouple interaction details. Uh, basically, the service or resource or application can guide the client. Uh, 
An example is something like this. The number of client, number of customers that can be exposed to the client is provided by embedded links. If you see an example in this case, a link, uh, we actually provide each, uh, I mean the, uh, the reference URI with the start and size. So by providing this start and size, uh, as part of the links, the applications guiding the client, you know, you want to actually be just the uh, two items from the starting point of two. Okay. And once this is done, maybe it will actually, you know, start with the uh, start number four and the size is maybe three and things like that. So that kind of information could be actually embedded in the links and that's actually guiding the client. Client will just use uh, this URL to get the, uh, you know, two uh, the customers uh, starting from the uh, second customer and things like that. So it could actually guide the client uh, in terms of what in terms of what is the next uh, URL it wants to use. Okay, so those are concrete benefits of using uh, HATEOAS. So in general, basically HATEOAS is actually the response data should include link information for subsequent uh, the, uh, the uh, resources. Okay, so how are we gonna actually do that? Yeah, so before we do that, uh, before we talk about how we do it, let's talk about the uh, W3C defined link relationship. Uh, this is basically a list of uh, the, uh, the logical relationships. Uh, you know, one thing we have seen before in previous slide is like uh, next, okay? So uh, previous, next, start, and self, uh, these are a subset of all the uh, standard relationships that have been defined. So let's actually go to this website uh, and uh, see if you can actually uh, see uh, more uh, relationships. Oops. Uh, it doesn't. Okay, so yeah, it looks like a somehow it doesn't. Oh, yeah, it's, it's not like this. RFC. Yeah, so I should actually go this way. Okay, here we go. So if you go over here, uh, let's see in the middle, uh, I think that there is a list of, um, yeah, so these are the list of uh, the uh, alternate appendix, bookmark, chapter, copyright, edit, uh, first, enclosure, and glossary, help, hub. These are all logical, uh, the uh, relationships that are defined uh, in this specification, okay? And there is in fact payment, logical name, okay? So, you know, if you're using payment as a logical name, the client application will actually use this logical name to get the concrete address, uh, and then uh, should be able to access that, okay? So usage of this logical name based on this W3C defined uh, logical names actually is a good idea, okay? So again, next, uh, start and self, and these are all uh, frequently used logical names. Okay, so these are examples of logical relationship examples. So this is the case that we could actually define a logical name of previous, okay? And the actual URL is this. And, uh, and this is an example where we have defined customers and orders as a logical name, and then actual URL is this. The uh, localhost 8080, and uh, you know something like this, and also we could have uh, next and payment and all those things. So these are all actually using logical names, and uh, you're going to use it using uh, rel relation, uh, the uh, attribute. Okay. Okay, so. We just learned the concept of H-A-T-E-O-A-S, why it is useful, and uh, you also learned the concept of logical naming. Now let's see how we can actually support H-A-T-E-O-A-S in, you know, in JAXRS application. So basically, uh, you want to implement H-A-T-E-O-A-S -A -A by embedding links within the document itself, or you could actually provide the links as a link header. So, you know, re response could have a link uh, header, response link, response header. So you could actually have either uh, choice to provide the links to the client. 
So Jaxdata has actually support link and link builder classes for building links. And uh, it also actually provides the uh, JaxB adapter class, which can be used to embed links in JaxB annotated class that could be used uh, to provide the links in the, uh, the XML uh, the, uh, document. Okay. All right, so we're gonna actually try the, uh, these two schemes. We are gonna actually see how we can embed links in the response body itself. And then we're gonna we are gonna take a look how we can embed links in the link response header. Okay, so this is uh, JaxRS provides a link and link that builder classes. Okay, uh, so link class contains JaxB adapter so that you can embed links in the JaxB annotated class. This is for uh, generating XML. Uh, you don't need to have HSB adapter for JSON, however. Uh, it maps JAXRS link type to a value that can be marshaled and unmarshaled in JAXB. So this is an example. Suppose we have customers, uh, the element. Uh, it could actually have a collection of customer. And you could also have a list of link. Okay. And uh, then in order to create a link, basically you can specify this link uh, .jaxb adapter class using XML Java type adapter annotations and basically it will create the links for you for XML document. Okay. You don't need these XML things for JSON so we can actually see how we can actually handle these things in both XML and JSON. Okay so that is exercise one. So let's take a look at the exercise one document. Let's see. So let's Wait, okay, here we go. All right, so exercise one, we are going to embed links inside the response data. So we have uh, two uh, sample applications, client and server. One is uh, Atom Link Server and Atom Links Client. Okay, so let's actually try to run these two guys. So stop the previous running application. So we have uh, the uh, Oh, okay. I have not import the project. Import Maven and Labs. Okay. All right. So Adam link server. And so let's run the Adam link server application. Run as a Java application. Okay, so server application is up and running. Uh, so, and um, uh, if, yeah, we can certainly actually run the client application as well. So let's run the client application, run as and Java application. And uh, basically it will uh, show the response which contains uh, the links as you can see here. Okay, yeah, so uh, it's actually receiving, getting, yeah, so I'm gonna actually use the lab documentation. Uh, so the, uh, basically what you're, what you're seeing is that each uh, response should include uh, the link information. So here is receiving the first two customer and then it does have a next relationship which is starting from start three and the size two. And uh, then also has a previous link. So previous link has again starting from 0 to 2 and uh, the application type is XML. Uh, you can certainly actually run this guy in the call. So let's actually run this guy with a call. So you know when I actually use the starting 1 and 2 it's going to actually retrieve the first two uh, customers. So so first two customers and you can see that is in fact the uh, you know release the next and previous. Okay. Uh, and uh, we can certainly have a JSON as well. So I'm gonna, yeah, so I'm gonna just copy this guy. So we can certainly receive it in the form of JSON data. And again, it does have this, um, you know, the uh, next relationship and the previous relationship. Okay, and it's actually computing that URL. Okay, uh, and uh, you can, you can, you can actually certainly use the uh, Postman. Uh, if you do use a postman, it actually gives you a bit more uh, easily to read 
the uh, the uh, syntax okay so why don't I actually do that so I'm gonna just copy this guy and uh, postman here and get okay so yeah we have this link information all right now if I actually get the uh, this is this is the next information right so I can actually uh, use this guy and uh, then send it then here uh, then we have uh, again next and previous right uh, and uh, then oh yeah so yeah looks like uh, this is not really right yeah so the uh, customer start is three and the size is two so let's actually send it okay so uh, that looks better okay uh, okay so basically uh, you should be able to actually get the information as well from the any client type and uh, you can run the client application and uh, this you know the first time uh, is going to receive uh, this uh, first two customers so it does have the first customer of the first set of customers it will have only uh, in this case uh, next because there is no previous right and then here uh, when you're actually receiving this guy now you have uh, the previous link and uh, next yeah this is the next link and previous link and then uh, the not last one should have a just previous right because we have only six customers and uh, when you try to access the uh, uh, last set uh, there is nothing uh, you know there is no extra customers after that so it's basically displaying only uh, uh, the uh, previous link okay all right so if you take a look at the server side code uh, so basically here uh, we have uh, the customers and uh, we are going to uh, and it does have list of customer and list of link okay and uh, then we are basically creating a link so you know we have a start size start and size and you're basically making sure that the total size is less than the number of uh, customers and uh, then we are going to create yeah basically we are actually cloning it uh, because we you know we actually uh, we are basically using uh, builder for creating both the next link and previous link okay uh, so we got we actually create the URI and then we are going to create the link object and uh, basically from link class you are going to call from URI uh, the static method and uh, we provide the next URI here and then we are adding next uh, relationship and you also specify the type so you know basically this is going to be type attribute and then build okay so that will actually return the link object and then we are adding the link to link list add method so link list add method is basically you're adding the link to the list of link okay uh, and at the end, you know, we're going to actually call set links with this link list array. Okay. Uh, and that should, that basically will do it. And also if you take a look at the customers uh, Java, you know, basically this uh, link that JAXB adapter class uh, annotated with this guy is actually used to create uh, this link of list. Okay. Inside these customers. So this is the case that we have uh, the the link list of link as part of the response data. Okay. All right. So the client code uh, basically what we do is we are going to actually call get next uh, the uh, you know basically we are just using the URI, right? We are just using the URI uh, from each uh, the uh, link, and then we are just kind of you know retrieving the uh, the next set of customers. Okay. Uh, so this is the again the same customers.java file okay and here uh, we are basically getting the yeah so this is the client side customers okay and here basically when the get next method is invoked uh, we are basically calling the uh, you know we are getting the the data uh, of the next okay and get previous is actually getting the URI of the previous uh, the uh, logical link Okay. All right. So that is uh, the uh, that is uh, basically having uh, links inside the response body itself.
Okay. All right. So for your own exercise, I want you to add these embedded links uh, again for the orders CRUD uh, server and uh, CRUD uh, client application. Okay. All right. So I'm going to give you guys about the uh, 10 or 15 minutes to finish the exercise one of H A O A H A T E O A S. Okay. Continue. Uh, next, we are going to see how we can embed links in the link response header. So in previous example, we uh, embed links in uh, as part of the response uh, body uh, in the actual data. Uh, now, you could actually provide links in the link response header uh, rather than uh, as part of the, uh, uh, the data. Okay, so this is how you can do that. So JackSatus provides a link and link.builder class for building links. So here uh, from this URI, uh, you're going to actually call REL. So basically, you are creating uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, update logical link. And you can also provide, you can call the type method. And you provide the type here. And uh, then you're going to call build. Uh, here, jpassion.com and 123 is going to be used to replace uh, this host and ID variable. And then you got the link object. Okay, So basically, this will create this link if you add it to, uh, to the, uh, you know, if you add it as a link uh, response, so link response header. So you're going to call links method passing this link object. And then it will add uh, this to the link response header. OK, so that is exercise two. So it works pretty much the same as the first one, except that this time we are embedding the links in the, uh, in the uh, uh, in link header. OK, so let's stop it. And then the uh, uh, link uh, headers server run as and Java application. Okay, it's up and running, and let's try to run the client. Run as and yeah. So this is actually uh, and yeah. So let me just run the client, and uh, let me show you uh, the um, main. So this is the case that we have uh, the um, uh, root resource called the shop, and shop has a customer and orders. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to actually use the uh, lab documentation to explain how things work here. Uh, I'm going to go with the second. Okay. So the first uh, resource, uh, there is a shop resource. And shop resource, we are going to get these two uh, links, customer links and orders. So we have, you can see, we have our customers and orders uh, relationship. And the actual uh, URL is this guy. Okay, so it's going to call the shop resource, and that is the initial URI the customer need to know. And after that, it doesn't really have to know anything else. I mean, if you remember our uh, initial discussions on H A T E O S location transparency uh, slide, you know, we like to minimize the URL information that is being exposed to the client uh, as minimum as possible. What that means is that the client sh should know just the initial uh, URI. And after that, uh, the, uh, the responses should actually include uh, the subsequent uh, URLs. And that's basically what we are doing here. Client need to know just the uh, shop resource URI. And uh, it will return uh, customers and orders. Uh, in the header like this, and then it's going to create a customer, update a customer, create a customer, update a customer, create an order, uh, and then get the list of orders, and uh, then create the order, uh, and yeah, so this time you are canceling the order, uh, and uh, and then purge the order. So here we have a two different concept. Canceling an order is basically just uh, it's not deleting an order, it's basically setting the flag in the order that it is canceled. Purge is basically deleting that order. So that is a different concept. So in the server side code, if you think about it, if you actually see the code here, uh, you know, basically we have in fact had uh, the uh, method. So basically we are receiving the initial URI from the shop resource. 
through head, the client will actually call this uh, the uh, shop resource ending head method, HTTP head method. Okay, and uh, here is going to create the custom URI and then order URI. Okay, and then it's going to create the uh, customers and orders link. Okay, and then it calls the uh, links method, passing this customers link and orders link. Okay, and uh, so the link response field, uh, response, uh, you know, the uh, the header will be set uh, with these two uh, customers and orders link. Okay, uh, and uh, and yeah, so here, uh, you know, the uh, this is actually for creating a customer, and these are pretty much the same. Uh, code that we have seen, nothing really special here. And this is pretty much the same code that we have seen in our previous case. Uh, it's constructing a next link. Okay. Uh, the only difference between this example and the previous example is that here we are basically uh, constructing the links information. We are embedding link information in the header rather than as part of the uh, uh, the uh, uh, response body, meaning in the day as part of the data. Okay. Uh, so the client code. So client code uh, is going to call the uh, get link method uh, and get the uh, customers. Uh, so we got the link information and same thing for the order link. Okay. And uh, then basically we are just using those uh, link information to uh, move on to the subsequent uh, operations. Okay. All right, so for your next exercise, uh, we're gonna actually, you know, the modify the code to use this uh, link in the uh, response header uh, scheme rather than uh, embedding the links as part of the, uh, uh, the data, okay? So I'm gonna give you guys maybe about five minutes to finish uh, 2.5. As long as you get the sense of how things work, uh, that should be good enough, okay? And we'll just move on.